right. Well, I want to welcome everyone to the League of Women Voters Forum for Clay County and Moorhead. Um, we want to thank the library for providing us with this uh, really wonderful space to host the forum. And we want to thank MCAM for recording for us. Um, the forum will be broadcast later on Moorhead Public Access, and it will also be available on the League of Women Voters website if you would like to watch it again. Um, a little information about the League of Women Voters. The League is a nonpartisan political organization. Um, and we are devoted to educating the community and the public around civic issues, um, and part of that being the candidates forums that we have for both Clay County, Moorhead, and Fargo, um, and Cass County. So today we're going to start out the day with the forum for the county commissioners and the county sheriff. Um, and hopefully everyone has gone around and gotten the, the cards, and if you would like to ask a question, um, you can just write that down on the card. If it is specific to either the commission or the sheriff candidates, um, please write that down on your card so I know who to direct the question to. And do we have a timer? For the, um, each candidate will be allowed two minutes introduction. Um, intro introducing statement, and I think until we get an official timer, one minute, one, less says one minute. Um, I can actually time you guys um, while you do your, your introduction. Um, and then how we'll do it is we'll, John Everett, you can start us out um, for the introduction. We'll just go down the line, and then when we take the first question, um, that will go to Jenny Mojo. Oh, okay. Um, so Les will do the timing, so he'll... Uh, watch him for, you know, stop signals. There we go. I think he's coming around. Okay, there we go. All right, John Everett, if you would start us off. Hi, I'm John Everett. Uh, excuse me. I'm John Everett. I'm a uh, resident of uh, Alliance Township, uh, about uh, five miles from Comstock. Uh, I have farmed uh, most of my life as well as operating a certified seed plant and being a farm advocate and rural advocate in northwest and west central Minnesota. Uh, I've been a county commissioner for the last 20 years and thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, I have a wife and, and four children, adult children, and, and seven grandchildren. And uh, my wife and I still live on our family farm in Alliance Township. Hello, thank you for coming today. My name is Jenny Mojo. I am running for District 3 County Commission. I am running because I think it's important that uh, my generation steps up and takes their place in county leadership. And so I'm excited for this opportunity. I was born and raised a uh, Rusted in Kurtz Township. I'm a Moorhead High School graduate. I have an Associate of Arts degree and I also have training as a certified nurse's aide. I would appreciate your vote and look forward to this discussion. Hello, my name is Kevin Campbell. I am a county commissioner for the last 12 years. My wife and I live in Oakport Township, which is soon to become part of the city, that portion of Oakport Township. Uh, I served on the Oakport Town Board for 12 years before uh, uh, running for office for the county commission, and I have served on the county board for the last 12 years. And um, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I do want to thank the League of Women Voters and the, the library for hosting this. Thank you, my name's Al Gordon. I um, am a candidate for District 4 County Commission. I would like to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting this, the library, Mr. Bakke. A little bit about my background, I have a four-year business administration degree with emphasis in accounting, um, law enforcement. I have experiences in just about every level of government, city, local, county, state, federal. I'm running here today because I've been throughout the county and over the last 12 years, the people of the county just don't feel that they've been represented to their true, true feelings and what they believe in. So I'm here to give the people of Clay County a choice. I'm here to give the people that, the voting people choices that they haven't had in 12 years. 
and I believe that I've qualified, I'm experienced, and I'm ready for the job. Thank you. Hello, my name is Bill Berquist, the Sheriff of Clay County. I want to thank the people for having us here today. Uh, just a little bit about me. I worked in the city of Glendon, Dilworth Police Departments. Um, I was a loss prevention manager for the Holiday Corporation. I was a Moorhead officer for 14 years. 12 of those, I was the DARE officer. And I was also on the SWAT team as a negotiator. Um, during the 12 years as sheriff, I've been actively involved in all aspects of law enforcement administration. I've had the opportunity to be on the board of the Minnesota Sheriff's Association. Um, at one time, I was their president. I'm also on three advisory board areas for local law enforcement um, educating facilities. Um, as the sheriff, I obviously have a lot of administrative uh, deals that I do do, but one of my favorite things is, is getting out and talking to the people in the county. I do many presentations every week from our youth all the way through to the senior citizens. We have a group of what we call the Triad Club, which every community has a monthly meeting. Um, we go to those meetings and discuss issues with them or any issues they may have. So, and thank you for having us. I'm Ryan Alderman. I'm a candidate for Clay County Sheriff. I've got 20 years experience as a Clay County Sheriff. I've also worked in the cities of Dilworth, Glendon, and Holly when I was starting out. I think Clay County is ready for a change. Uh, sheriff Berkowitz has had 12 years to accomplish his goals in the job of sheriff. I offer new leadership, new ideas, and new goals. I'd reach out to our new American and ethnic communities to foster public safety and develop trust. I would take a more active role in our domestic violence court that we have in Clay County. And I would also work with the schools to develop some curriculum to help our kids prepare for the pitfalls that are associated with social media and electronic communications. I think Clay County is ready for a change, and with your help, I'd like to make that happen. Thank you. I'd like to remind the audience, if you have questions, just raise up your card, and someone, uh, one of the league members, will come around and pick it up for you um, and get it to the moderator. So for our first question, we'll start with Jenny Mojo. Um, and Les, how much time do they have to respond? One minute to respond. All right, so the first question um, is, with the large amount of state programs administered at the county level, what experience do you have with understanding the financial cost sharing between the state and county programs? Thank you. I think as a, as a county, it's very important for us to work hand in hand with the state. There are great uh, programs that many of our citizens take part in. I and my, my husband and I have also taken part in some of those programs throughout the years. I think that I have a fiscal responsibility that gives me the qualification to work hard for these programs. I also feel like I would be a good advocate for the community members to listen to them and find out what programs are important to them and how we can work together to keep those funded. Thank you. To Kevin Campbell. Yeah, that's um, a, a good question. There, in, in the cooperation with the county and the state, there are many state programs that are administrated, administered through the county. And through a cost share process, it can depend on the ability to, to provide more services. So, for example, we have county staff in the Health and Human Services Department that deal with the state and deal with our citizens on different issues. Depending on the amount of time that they work with them, we establish revenue that we gain through the state of Minnesota. So the, the county receives revenue from the state of Minnesota, which then helps us to further provide services to the people that need them in our county. All right, Al Gordon. Thank you. Yes, I'm aware of the, the pass-through money that comes through to the state of, or the county of Clay County. Uh, Clay County levies about $23, $24 million a year through its taxes. And with the pass-through money, you know, you're up towards about $100 million. Now, it's very good to be a, a partner with the state and to provide the services you need. But also with that, you have to take in consideration the dollars that you have to put in 
compared to what the state puts in, and how in the future, if you can continue to fund these programs that you start. Again, there's many good programs. There's many good programs that can be funded through the county, and there's just some, some that simply cannot be afforded that we have to turn down. But it is important to be a partner with the state, and I would be, I would, I would be glad to do so, to, to advocate for that. Thank you. To Bill Berkowitz. I guess I thought it was only for the commissioners. Sorry about that. <coughs> well, I, I think if you guys just want to do the best you can, we don't want to leave you out of any questions if you have a response. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, obviously, as a sheriff's office, we work with the state officials quite a bit um, with our law enforcement people. Uh, another thing that uh, we have done in the past is Cass County in North Dakota and Clay County in Minnesota have all got together and we uh, share resources from every emergency uh, system that we have from fire departments to the rescue squads <coughs> and other law enforcement. So it's been very good for us that, you know, not every department has to go buy that most expensive equipment because we are willing to share and we also have the, the joint uh, dispatch center that's been working very well for us. And uh, again, it brought us all together and gets a chance for us to get to know all law enforcement in our community. Thank you, Ryan Alderman. I've actually been out to Washington, D.C. with the Minnesota Police Officers Association and we've lobbied to our congressional delegation uh, for law enforcement specific dollars. Uh, there's a burn grant that funds a lot of the drug task force. There's a Violence Against Women Act that uh, puts money towards domestic violence issues and uh, women's safety. And I think we need to do more advocacy at the state level and the federal level to get those monies coming in. To John Everett. <coughs> it's a vitally important part of the way we do uh, government in Minnesota. The state, uh, most of the responsibility uh, for programs is with the state, but the county is the one that carries them out and, and fulfills the state's obligation. So the cost sharing is a very important uh, thing. One of the frustrations for county government is that many times uh, there are things mandated that we need to do that uh, do not have funds coming with them. And that's one of the great frustrations that counties are wrestling with is uh, taking care of these mandates without the, without the ability or the money to, to do it. So we have to raise our funds uh, uh, locally to do that in many cases. But overall, it's a very positive uh, system in that, uh, in that uh, in most cases, the money does come uh, with it to carry out our, our programs, and, and the county has done a good job of, uh, of fulfilling that responsibility. Thank you. So the next question will start with Kevin Campbell. Um, and this one is directed just towards the commissioner candidates, um, and that is how well is the county providing services to help low-income families escape poverty? Well, and again, I, that's, that goes to both the, the combination of, of what we do at the county level and the state level. Uh, we need to work hand-in-hand hand between the county and the state uh, to obtain the necessary um, funds to help with, with these issues. Um, the, can you read the question again? Oh, certainly. Um, how well is the county providing services to help low-income families escape poverty? Yeah, the, um, our, our numbers are on the rise. If you, if you were to go back and look, we are putting more and more emphasis and more and more dollars into that. And of course, again, it's with a cost share with, with the state of Minnesota. Uh, it's a it's a problem that's very difficult to tackle. It seems like every time you start to get a handle on it, uh, new ones come in. And it, um, um, but I, I think we're we're doing what we can and working with, um, you know, there's the issue going on now with with um, with uh, places for them to live too is another key issue. Thank you, Tal Gordon. Thank you. Well, right now Clay County is actually in a pretty good situation. We're about in the middle of the pack as far as the state of Minnesota. We have about 11.4% um, poverty in, in the county. Now, with the county being in a strong economic position right now, 
Um, I'll have to disagree with Commissioner Campbell as far as that being on the rise. It actually has been on the decrease over the last couple of years with the economics that the, uh, that the county has shown as far as the growth. So I think that the county is doing a good job. I think that uh, we'll continue to support the underprivileged and uh, we'll, we'll continue to do a good job with that. Thank you. All right, thank you. To John Everett. One of the, the uh, great things about uh, serving the underprivileged and the, the uh, low income folks is, is that we have many private uh, partnerships. We contract with a lot of nonprofits that, that do much of the work for us, and uh, that's been a very positive uh, arrangement because we're able to reach out from many different angles to, to help our people. It's a continual problem. We, we think we've done well and we're, that we're meeting uh, needs as they come along, but there's always more needs than than uh, resources so uh, it's something that will continue to be uh, uh, something we have to have to do and uh, we will uh, I think in the county do do the best we can and and, uh, and uh, do a good job of it thank you to Jenny Mojo thank you I was raised in a family that put a high priority on on public service and serving the community and I think that I would take that to the County Commission to help that I do feel that the county is doing a pretty good job when it comes to providing and assisting those in low income socioeconomic statuses. I feel like our public health programs are essential to raising healthy children in our schools and keeping people healthy. Our community is only as strong as uh, people who are struggling. So as a community, it's important to reach out and support these people. I think housing assistant programs are really important as well to where people don't have to worry so much about getting uh, the roof over their heads and they can focus uh, their energy on their jobs and and uh, contributing to the commu uh, communities. All right, thank you. Um, so the next question is not uh, directed to a specific group, so we'll have everyone answer it, starting with Al Gordon, um, and that is what are your thoughts on the diversion and its effect on Clay County. I never thought this would come up today. <laughs> no, as we all know, the diversion has been <laughs> has been a real topic of discussion over the last few years, and uh, you know, there's been a lot of time on it and a lot of uh, Commissioner Campbell's time on it. And no matter which way of the diversion you sit, you know, the, the man should be thanked for that, and and the county should be thanked for their input in this. However, I am an opponent of the current diversion plan. I don't believe that this is the only plan that will save Clay County, Fargo, the surrounding area. I believe in upstream, downstream, basin-wide retention. I don't believe in taking farmland out of Clay County when we were the fourth county in the state with, uh, with the economics as far as the agriculture. I believe there's other ways. It's been shown that there's other ways. It's a matter of how we want to do it, whether or not the federal government has to be involved, and whether or not we're going to look out after Clay County residents and not Fargo residents. Thank you. Thank you. To Bill Berquist. Certainly. Um, um, Al Gordon, since you only had the minute, do you feel that? He had a little over oh, oh, okay. okay. All right. <laughs> Should we do two minutes for this one? Okay. All right. So to Bill Burquist. Well, I guess I haven't, you know, really thought about it to kind of leave it up for the commissioners to do that. But, uh, you know, I have talked to people and I truly understand uh, the people whose land is going to be taken away is, you know, that, that was something tough. And, and they always say, well, if it's not in your backyard, it's a little easier to, uh, you know, to do it. But uh, I guess my thought was I wish, you know, the, everything like all the, the the DNR, they're still waiting for that to get completed, that that I wish they would have waited till it was all completed so, uh, I, so we didn't have to have this uh, stuff going back and forth. So. All right, to Ryan Alderman. Kind of on the same lines as Sheriff Berkowitz there. Um, I've worked numerous floods over the years as my, uh, with my duties as the 
with the Clay County Sheriff's Office. Uh, Moorhead has done a fantastic job uh, protecting the city of Moorhead. Uh, however, the uh, county board and the states decide to cooperate and agree on this. Uh, if there's any laws that go into effect uh, relating to the diversion, I guess as sheriff, I would work at enforcing the laws as they're written. All right, thank you. To John Everett. Well, this certainly is a very, very important issue for, for the county and for, <clears throat> for my community. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, in the 20 years that I've served on the county board, this is by far the most difficult uh, yeah, issue that I've had to face and uh, the most controversial. Uh, we definitely need flood protection for the cities of Fargo and Moorhead. And uh, even with all of the work that uh, Moorhead has done and, and the, the good shape it's in compared to what it was a number of years ago, we still need uh, a major, major project, uh, and the diversion seems to be the project that, that at least all the engineers feel is the most, uh, most viable. I do uh, still maintain that there needs to be further research to find, find other ways to make the diversion work without flooding out my community. And uh, I've said that from the beginning, and I, and I, and I continue to maintain that we, we need to uh, continue studying it uh, I trust that the DNR report will, will, uh, will come out and, and show this as well, that there needs to be other looks at other, other opportunities and other possibilities to make this project work without destroying uh, uh, much, of, uh, much of our community. Thank you. To Jenny Mojo. Thank you. I've had the privilege of traveling the county and visiting with uh, neighbors on this issue over the past few months. And, and one thing that, that rings true to everyone, where it, whether it be from Moorhead or Comstock or Barnesville or Holly, people want to be heard. And I will provide a strong voice for those people. I'll be an advocate for those people. I feel like the diversion um, is a great solution. However, there are, there are flaws. And it's important that everyone comes back to the table. Sometimes it's okay to say, we've made a mistake, we've, we've skipped a few steps, and we need to reevaluate. My great, great grandfather is buried in a cemetery in Comstock, and that cemetery has never seen water. So I don't believe that it's important to flood these areas in order to save areas that have seen water in the past. I will work strongly, listen, and advocate for our county. Thank you. And to Kevin Campbell. All right. Well, um, as Mr. Gordon has stated, I have been involved with this since 2009. And after 2009, after we almost lost both of our communities, uh, a group was established, and it, and it turned out to be that it was Clay County, Cass County, Fargo, and Moorhead. And when we were working with our state and federal legislatures, they all came to us and said, you are going to have to come up with a mutual plan, agreeable plan between your government entities. We did that. We came up with a plan that can protect Fargo and Moorhead and this region's economic future, and that is through a diversion. And I know there's been comments by some local legislatures, but it, these local legislatures have also come out and said that they, they do believe that Fargo and Moorhead needs a diversion. When we get into the controversial parts, if you, if you look back to, to the past, it was originally going to have all the impacts on the northern part of our county and going all the way up to Canada. There was to be over 4,000 structures impacted by that, by that plan. By changing the plan and creating a staging and storage area south, we brought the number of structures potentially in, in harm's way from 4,000 into the hundreds. The latest plan that we, that we have now once we're able to protect the areas like Comstock and Bakke and Hickson, we're down to 50-some structures that we'll need to have um, something done, whether it's a buyout or what have you. Uh, am I still open to other possibilities? Yes, but they need to have the engineering and technical background to support it. It just can't be theories. Thank you. So for the next two questions, um, since we are now starting with Bill Berquist, we have two that are um, directed just towards the sheriff's candidates. Um, so Bill Berquist, for your starting question, what do you feel is the highest priority um, or unmet need facing uh, Clay County regarding the sheriff's department? I think one of them is our, 
over the years, a lot of the state hospitals have been closing and we're having a big issue of people with mental health issues. And what's happening is law enforcement come in, come into them, and the only place they can take them is to a jail. A jail is not a place that we want our mental illness piece, people to be in. So we've been already started with the legislators trying to find out a good fix for this, but uh, again, the, they're not gonna get the help that they need, and obviously we can't just keep bringing them to the emergency room, that doesn't work either. So that's something that we really have to work hard at. Um, another thing is, is um, it seems like every so many years now, our radio system has to be replaced, which is, uh, I, I just don't get it, uh, but it's millions and millions of dollars, and we just did it, and now they tell us that our stuff is no good, and it's garbage, and we need to throw it away. So that'll be another big challenge. Thank you. Ryan Alderman. Can you give me the question again, please? Uh, what is the highest priority or unmet need facing the uh, Clay County regarding the Sheriff's Department? I think the sheriff's office can do better at addressing uh, crimes against women and just the personal crimes of violence that have been occurring uh, recently. I work at the courthouse, uh, a lot of assaults, domestic assaults, uh, sexual assaults are being processed through our courts. We have to work better at education and prevention. And if I could take a moment to address the mental health issues. I think mental health, health issues are a drain on the system. I don't think they're a major uh, problem in Clay County right now. There is crisis intervention training that is available to officers, uh, which trains them how to identify and respond to persons that are dealing with mental health crisis. And I think that training needs to be expanded through our department. Thank you. Um, so Mr. Alderman, for your question that you will start with, um, the Clay County Jail is currently overcrowded. We are sending prisoners to other facilities. What do you see as a solution, or multiple solutions, to this problem? Well, I, I believe we're shipping out about 15 uh, inmates a day to different facilities at a cost of, I think it's $75, $80 per person per day. Uh, we definitely need to address the jail issue. Uh, it's a can that's been getting kicked down the road for many years. The Department of Corrections has had our jail, which is the oldest in the county or in the state, on kind of a probation for many years. Uh, it's a huge expense, but I think the dollars have to be prioritized to address this need in the county. To Bill Burquist. When I was first elected, the first day was the jail issue, and it's been there every day since 12 years ago. Um, the DOC runs the jails in the state and even the feds, and they were told to rewrite the 2911 codes for jails uh, to get in line with the federal um, rules. Well, that caused more space per inmate, and that's kind of one of our big issues are. And we do have two commissioners that are, have been on the so-called jail committee. They got a chance to talk to the DOC and even came into the jail when they did come and decertified six of our beds, which means that six more people that we are housing out. Um, when we do have a jail inspection, our numbers are always 98%. So the jail's gotta be doing the right thing. And But again, uh, we do have to look at it and the commissioners, they have the toughest job in the world because they have to figure out how to pay for it. All right, thank you. So for the next question, we'll be back to starting with John Everett. Um, and this is not addressed specifically to the commissioners, so um, we will let everyone answer. Um, so what role do you see our institutions of higher education playing for the success of the region? Well, that's a, that certainly is a big role in, in Moorhead. We have uh, a very uh, highly populated uh, uh, population of students uh, with uh, fine institutions here. Uh, so the, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big part of our economic base, uh, the higher education in, uh, in Clay County. And we'd be, in, we'd be in real trouble if we didn't have the universities and colleges here. Uh, I, I think it uh, will continue to be a strong ec economic uh, uh, part of, uh, of the county, and we need to do all we can to make it uh, 
uh, make it work for them. We, we have uh, participated uh, by allowing our bonding power to be used by the, by the colleges and universities in, in the city uh, for the building of certain buildings. Primarily it's been uh, student housing and uh, that's worked very, uh, very well. So it's a good partnership, I think. Jenny Mojo. Thank you. One of the great things about our county is that we are privileged to have some great colleges and universities here. I think that that brings great economic status to the area. It also brings a great amount of kids to the area. We need to capitalize on having them here, make Clay County a warm and welcoming place to retain these kids. We need to do what we can to uh, the, the people that are graduating from our area high schools. They'll go off sometimes and, and work, and we need to do what we can to make it an inviting place for them to return back to Clay County, to raise their families here, and possibly go to higher education here. Thank you. To Kevin Campbell. Yeah, I think Jenny is right on. I, I think that um, that's critical, and I, and I think we need to take it a step further. I think we need to uh, improve on our relationships with our economic development groups throughout uh, Clay County, each of our cities. A lot of them have their own, and we have the Greater fargo Marduk Ec Economic Development Association. We have the Chamber. We should be coming up with ways to promote more of these students when they finish schools to, to find ways to stay and work in Clay County. That, that is extremely important. It's nice to have them here during their stay and, and learning their education, but it would be wonderful if they could call this their home. And, and there's ways that, that we can do that by working and, um, you know, even through the chamber, they have a deal where they, used to, where they have these brown bag things where you can go in for these lunches, you can talk with experts. And these college kids can go in there and enter entrepreneurial issues and say, how can I start this? How can I, I have this dream, how can I start it? And there's people in this county and in these cities willing to help do that. Al Gordon. Thank you. Well, the education system in Clay County is a very important part of our county. Currently, our county population has 73% of people over 16 working in the workforce. 73% of people over 16 working in the workforce. That's the highest number in the state of Minnesota. So what am I getting to? Not only high school students, but college students are making up a big part of our workforce within the area. They are here to work, they're here to do their education. We have jobs for them here. But like Commissioner Campbell is, said, is finding the good job to keep them here after that part. Now, the higher education also does have a lot of good jobs for our county as far as the, the older individuals. With, with that being said, the younger the population base that we can keep with the rising age of our state, the better off we'll be. Thank you. Thank you. To Bill Burquist. Well, it is very important to our community. It's a large part of our community, all the higher ed colleges that we do have. And obviously, as a law enforcement administrator, I get to be a chance to be part of their advisory boards, and it, it's so they do kind of listen to us. I mean, we go there and talk about what uh, we are looking for in law enforcement officers. We have a very good criminal justice program at Moorhead State. That's where I got my four-year degree at was. And so we do work with Moorhead Police a lot on the college issues, and uh, I think we work very well together And because they, we, with even the administrators of the colleges, um, they have an open door for us anytime we need it. Thank you. To Ryan Alderman. I'll take off the law enforcement hat here for a moment while I address part of this issue. I think uh, the community needs to work uh, with the schools and some uh, private development into getting some other options uh, besides uh, drinking for the kids to take up their time on the weekends and evenings. I think we've got some growth going over here. Uh, the old coaches, trader and trapper site. Uh, I'm optimistic that that'll be a good uh, source for the uh, college kids to attend and uh, hopefully we'll uh, help uh, you know, add to the economic uh, development of the community. Thank you. All right. Um, so this next question was not uh, directed specifically to 
you know, one group. So we will again um, give everyone a chance to answer. Um, so we'll start with Jenny Mojo. Do you believe economic development is important to Clay County? Um, and if so, what experience do you have to improve it? Thank you. I think economic development is crucial for the Fargo-Moorhead area. I, as a young mother, uh, feel that it's important that our kids grow up in an area that, that promotes development, promotes economic growth. I don't think that it's always important to run over to Fargo to grab what you need. We need to establish businesses in Clay County. We need to keep Clay County businesses running. What can we do as a, commi a commission board to expedite the growth of the economic statuses and businesses in Clay County? I think that's important to a healthy society, a healthy county. Uh, my experience is to hold people accountable, to help listen to people, to hear what their needs are, to hear what their desires are. If they want to stay in Clay County, what can we do to help them? And I will work to be an advocate for them. Thank you. Kevin Campbell. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a really good topic, and I think it's one of the most critical ones for Clay County is, is the importance of economic development. And part of the economic development that we can have in Clay County that we're going to need in Clay County is going to be needed to, be, to stay competitive in our real estate tax issues with our border cities. Uh, right now, we, we, we certainly have uh, advantages in our real estate taxes here in Minnesota compared to North Dakota. Um, w and we are, we are doing and have done a lot of things in economic development. All you have to do is drive down Highway 10 and go through Dilworth, then go to Glendon, and then go to Hawley, or go to Barnesville, or go to Sabin in the last years, and see what growth has occurred in all those communities. My friends, that's ex economic development. And we're going to continue that by working with the the economic development authorities, the business associations that are created in these towns that are going to help all of this, and we'll be right there to do it. All right, thank you. Tal Gordon. Thank you. Well, there's four portions of the economics in this county that make up about 60% of the workforce. You have the healthcare industry, you have educational, which we talked about, you have the social assistance as far as retail trade, you have them type of things. Yes, uh, economic development is very important, and I think that's where our county has lacked a little bit. Although we have these towns that have brought in things, I have not seen a board on the county that has went out and promoted these activities as far as bringing economic development within the county. Now, the towns have done it. The board has set up a fund for young entrepreneurs that they can come in and borrow low interest money, but they haven't promoted it. I don't know if we've had anybody that's taken us up on it. We need to put somebody in that is willing to go out, talk to people. We need to bring the business in. We have to let them know that Clay County is a viable place to do business. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, to Bill Bergquist. Well, we probably have a little different role with that, but as law enforcement, when a a company does come in and open up a new business it is our job to go there and meet them and help them in any way we can I see the fire chiefs here too every new business they go to they they go to there and show them their different things but we help them if they have issues later on we help them with their security and uh, again it's important for us as a community to keep growing Ryan Alderman Again, along the same lines, uh, the public safety, uh, I'm sure, is taken into consideration by businesses and corporations when they're looking for a location you know, alongside with, you know, what are the tax uh, impacts, what's the wage and hour impact going to be, and, you know, why is Clay County the best place for us to locate? Uh, personally, I think the workforce we have in Clay County is, is more than adequate and probably stands out quite a bit in the fargo Morehead community. Uh, we've got a lot of high school kids that have jobs, and uh, they're working through high school, they're working through college, and I think that work ethic is something that you know needs to be uh, promoted and encouraged in the area. All right, and to John Everett. Uh, <clears throat> certainly, economic development is a very important uh, 
uh, issue for the county, and I think we've been doing quite well uh, lately. The county has, uh, does have a program for in tax incentives for new businesses throughout the county, and people are participating in that. We do have the loan program that Al, you mentioned, but it, uh, contrary to what you said, it is being well used, and uh, probably not as, uh, as much as we would like, but there are many people participating in it, and it has helped many businesses to, to succeed over the, over the years. Uh, the, I think that uh, right now we're seeing a lot of hopeful signs uh, in the city of Moorhead. Uh, there's a lot of new projects that have been initiated and proposed and, and that we're excited about that. Uh, the, uh, uh, the other cities uh, in the county, we, we partner with them. We uh, participate in, in their incentive programs as well. And uh, we, we really uh, think that we've done a number of things that will, will help encourage economic development. I've been impressed that there's been uh, so much new growth uh, in our, in our uh, residential areas in all the cities. So for our last question, we will start with Kevin Campbell. Um, and the question is um, asking the group to address a lack of affordable housing. Um, and the, the question that we have here specifically um, asks that you touch on what the county can do to assist families with children struggling to obtain housing because the head of household has a felony on their record. So we can start with Kevin Campbell. Can you read that last part with him? Yeah, so what can the county do to assist families with children struggling to obtain housing because the head of household has a felony on their record? And I would say this is a pretty you know, specific question, um, but even if you want to address just the larger issue of the, the lack of affordable housing um, in the county as well, that would. Yeah, because be when, when you get into the felony stuff, I, th there can be legal issues that are, that are beyond my pay grade that, that I don't know that I want to get into. I think you can get people like Ken Kohler here to talk about those types of things. But the, uh, you know, and obviously the, one, of the, one of the major um, hot topics again here over the last few months was the, uh, was the proposed Churches United uh, facility for, apartment facility for, for taking more people. And, uh, and I'll tell you um, right out that I'll do everything that I can to support single families with children, people who are disabled, veterans who have fallen on hard times and are homeless. We need to find places for those folks to live. Now, the, in, the, in the controversial thing with, with the Churches United property, it had more to do with where it went. We as a county board don't get involved with zoning. Where, where those properties go is a city zoning issue. I support the need for those facilities. Thank you. Al Gordon. And I think everybody at this table supports that also. It's just a matter of how we're going to do it. We have social services in place. We have HUD in place. We have different things in place. We have low-income housing in place. We need to balance as far as what we can spend and how we can best utilize those resources to help these people. Again, nobody here would put anybody out on the street if they had the choice. We just need to allocate the resources as we best can, work with the agencies that we already have in place, and we have to find places for these people to live. Thank you. Thank you. To Bill Burquist. Well, as law enforcement, we do support it also um, because we deal with them on a daily basis, sometimes 3, 4 in the morning, and it's 20 below, and you have no place to bring them. Um, you know, we do have the buildings here for it, but when they're full, they're full, and we have to find other places to bring them. Um, but as far as, you know, the, the felony issue, again, that wouldn't even be under our... Um, I know some landlords have the right to do a criminal history, so I would hate to take that away from them, but to have that property where we could put them would be a very good thing for all of us. Okay, to Ryan Alderman. The community has, in my experience, uh, been pretty uh, accommodating when it comes to the, the families uh, through the uh, YWCA over in Fargo and the Churches United here in Moorhead. Uh, in my experience working on the street and, and ending up in situations where you may have a car broke down on the interstate in the winter with a mom and two kids, 
uh, there are some options and, and there's also been some vouchers that have been issued where they will temporarily place them into uh, short-term hotels. Um, as far as the felony issue, uh, I think it would largely uh, depend on what the felony was. It may be a nonviolent property crime or you know it could be all the way up to a you know sexual predator. Uh, I think those issues would have to be taken into consideration in the big plan. All right, John Everett. Well, I think that the, it is a big issue uh, for people with uh, with felonies, uh, and I'm I'm troubled by that because if they have uh, served their time and uh, paid back society and uh, by by living out their sentence and so on, it seems to me that they should not be denied the right to live uh, where they want to. And um, I know it's a right for apartment homes, apartment houses to, to make that decision uh, uh, as to who they let live there, but, it, but at the same time, it's something we need to work on. I think we, it would be good to have a, a thorough study of that and find out how, how serious the problem is for Moorhead and try to find a way to, uh, to resolve it because uh, it is very unfortunate that people are, are uh, not allowed to have a place to live uh, because of a past uh, deed which they've already paid the society back for. Okay, and to Jenny Mojo. I agree with Commissioner Everett on this. Uh, when it does come to people who are nonviolent offenders that have had a felony and have, have served their time, it's unfair if they are judged in that aspect on housing. Clay County is a, a great place, and I think there are people that are struggling. We have in Moorhead, I think, an unemployment of less than 3%, but there are people that are still struggling. It's promising to me to see the amount of apartments that are going up in Moorhead, uh, close to the schools, to give people the opportunity to attain that. There are public policies that are helping to serve as in incentives or, or help to people that cannot afford these, but, but it is important that as a community we do what we can to embrace these people and help them to get back on their feet so they can become uh, productive people of our community. All right, thank you. So to wrap up, we will give each candidate a one minute um, kind of closing statement, and we will start with Al Gordon. Well, again, thank you for the opportunity to be here. And it's good to see everybody here that's interested, and it's really a pleasure to talk to people that are interested in the issues. I began this earlier in this year when I found out through several sources and through the announcement that Commissioner Campbell was not going to run for a re-election. I went through not only just our district, but I went through Clay County. And I explored the possibility of making a run for the candidacy of District 4. And through that exploration, I found out through several people that it was time for a change. After 12 years, there are several people that I've never seen, talked to, uh, Commissioner Campbell. Their voice has not been heard. The people of the Southern County has invited them down to their meetings to listen to their concerns. He has not once been there. I'm here to accommodate the people of the Clay County. I want to be a voice and an advocate for the whole county. I'll be elected through District 4, but it doesn't stop at District 4. I'll be a voice for the County of Clay. Thank you. Thank you. To Bill Burquist. Well, again, I would like to thank the League for having us here today and for all the people that came here to uh, listen. Uh, we have a strong cooperation of efforts in all fronts when it comes to emergency services. Like I said, we've worked hard to get us all together. Uh, we don't worry about the fact that we have a Red River between us and another state. We still together work together and, again, uh, bringing the resources together helps all of us. I'm very committed to having an open door policy if anybody resident wants me to c come and talk to me or if they want me to come to talk to them, I would do that. Um, I'm very open for suggestions. I know there was a time in law enforcement that we didn't want the public's help because we were the cops. We could take care of it, but without the public, we would not survive. So again, thank you um, for giving me the 12 years as your sheriff. and. Looking forward to your support on November 4th for my reelection. Thank you. Ryan Alderman. 
I'm ready to take on the role as sheriff of Clay County. Uh, I think our department can do a much better job reaching out to the new American populations. 20 years ago when I started in this job, we had Hispanic interpreters into the courtroom on a regular basis. Right now, we see maybe once a month, maybe once every two months, we get a Hispanic interpreter. Every week, we have an Arabic-speaking interpreter coming into court to deal with the populations that are involved in the court process. We need to do some outreach to these communities, not just the new Americans, but all the ethnic communities in the area, and I will work to do that and foster some cooperation and trust in that role. I'm looking forward to uh, taking on the challenge as sheriff, and with your support, I hope we can move the department forward. Thank you. John Everett. First of all, I want to thank the, uh, the League of uh, Women Voters for uh, sponsoring this. It's, uh, it's always a privilege to be able to participate in this. I also want to thank my opponent uh, for the uh, good, uh, good uh, campaign and race that, uh, that she has won, run. And uh, we've been uh, family friends for, for years, go to the same church. And so we, we don't have anything, I don't think, bad to say about each other. So that's been uh, positive. And, um, the issues, a uh, number of issues that I have tried to hold up in the campaign uh, they haven't talked about today. I mean, the jail is one, and we didn't get a chance to talk about that. Uh, uh, but it's a big issue for us. And uh, we, we are certainly working towards raising the money to, to get that done as needed. Uh, the landfill is, a, is a, always a major issue, and we're, we're doing a number of initiatives to increase recycling and other things to extend the life of our landfill. And then ongoing need for transportation. We never have enough money to fix our roads, and that's something we're struggling with, trying to find ways in which we can do that uh, better. So I'd love to serve you again for another four years, if that's your desire. Thank you. Jenny Bojo. Thank you. Having lived in Clay County most of my life, I'm proud that my roots run deep here, and I'm, I'm proud to say that my husband and I are raising our children on the farm that my great-grandfather founded in 1903. I think it's important that, there, uh, like I said, a, a new leadership steps up to take our place among, among the le leaders. I am very honored to be sitting next to two people that have a combined 34 years on the county commission, and that's a great thing. I've observed great leaders in our county, and it is my intention to take my place and become one of those. If elected, I intend to be your strong voice on the county, on the county board for people of all ages. I have the energy, the desire, and the skills to effectively serve you on the county board. M many years ago, uh, our county was found, our nation was founded on people, by people that were 35. I don't think that, that age is a, a num I think it's a number, really. And when they stepped forward with fresh ideas to establish our county, our country, excuse me, it was important that they did so, and it's my intention to do so as well. Thank you. Um, and finally, from Kevin Campbell. All right, thank you. Again, thank you to the League of Women Voters and the library for having us here today. And I just want to make one real quick comment that um, it's kind of hard for me to go someplace to talk to somebody when I have never received an invitation. Uh, it's hard to know when they want me to go there. So, uh, but going back a little bit about my final um, uh, time here, uh, earlier this spring, um, Mr. Gordon is right that I had considered not running, and I hadn't made it final, but I had put it out there public on my Facebook page that, that said that I was considering not running. And it was through that, when I did that, that I received enormous support and requests to run again. And that really touched me a lot, that, I, that people felt that confident in me that they wanted me to run, go back and run. Since then, I have um, put in my resignation notice with my other job. Uh, so at the end of March, I will complete 40 years as the accountant for Max Hardware. Um, but I do appreciate um, the work at, of District 4 that I've done, and I, I'm proud to have served you all, and I do ask for your support again. All right, thank you. Um, just to kind of wrap up, uh, it looks like the next form that we will be having is House 4B. Um, also later in the day, we will have for House 4A, and then we will give um, the District 9 judge candidates uh, a chance just to give a statement. Um, so we want to thank, oh, and the school board. They're not on our, our list here. Um, 
So the school board will also be coming up later today. Um, and I do just want to invite everyone that if you're interested in learning more about the League of Women Voters of the Red River Valley, um, you can visit our Facebook page or our website um, to get information on how to become a member um, and also look at some of the other community activities that we have going on throughout the year. So thank you everyone and thank you to the candidates.